Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am truly delighted to have this opportunity to speak on behalf of the Korean government at the second Indian Ocean Conference held under the theme of peace, progress, and prosperity. Is the Indian Ocean relevant to South Korea? Yes, very much. Emerging from the ashes of the Korean War in the 1950s, the Korean people faced the shortage of even food itself, as we could not find enough maritime protein resources in the narrow coastal waters near the Korean Peninsula we sent a fishing vessel out to distant waters, and that was Korea's first deep sea fishing operation. At first, this vessel went into the coastal waters of Singapore and the Philippines, but the catch was not good, and which drove this vessel farther into the Indian Ocean. There, at the last in 1957, we managed to catch 10 tons of high-quality fish. This fish you call tuna, and in Korea we call it chamchi, which literally means real good fish. As this story shows, the Indian Ocean is the place that laid the foundation for Korea's deep sea fishing industry, and indeed it served as the first beacon of hope for the Korean people when the country was preparing to make its mark on the world. Even now, the sea lanes of communications in the Indian Ocean are vital to Korea for trade and commerce. The theme of today's conference, Peace, Progress, and Prosperity, are values that are as relevant to Korea as to all other countries in the Indian Ocean region. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, nowadays it is said that the center of the global community is moving away from the Asia-Pacific to Indo-Pacific. The newly inaugurated Korean government is placing more emphasis than ever on promoting its relations with the key countries in the region who are leading the era of the Indo-Pacific. In this regard, Korea's new President Moon, upon his inauguration in May, sent his special envoy to India and other ASEAN countries. The main goal of this diplomatic initiative is to work together with India and the other countries in the region to pursue sustainable common prosperity and to further strengthen bilateral cooperation. In particular, on the basis of the special strategic partnership forged in 19, uh, 2015, my government will, will be working closely with the Indian government to enhance physical, people-to-people, -people, and institutional connectivity. Korea is willing to deepen demand-driven economic cooperation, supporting the idea of bringing more regional connectivity in the fields of energy, logistics, and transportation through increased infrastructure investment and creating multilateral forums for trade, commerce, and economic development. My government welcomes the initiatives proposed and carried out by countries in the region in order to boost the connectivity by developing regional infrastructure. I look forward to creative and concrete ideas and policy inputs being developed here at this conference, creating synergies among these various initiatives. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Indian Ocean region is an indispensable conduit for Korea's major exports and energy imports. It is therefore clearly in the interest of Korea to join other countries in the region to safeguard the peace and stability of the region. Nowadays, these vital sea lines of communication are not without challenges. Maritime terrorism, piracy, natural disasters, as well as increasing instances of naval presence are factors that have the potential to undermine the stability of the Indian Ocean region. The Korean government is of the view that it is critical to establish a rules-based order in the, in the Indian Ocean. We seek active cooperation with the countries involved to strengthen maritime governance, such as maritime confidence building measures including collective counter-terrorism efforts and anti-piracy cooperation, 
and for ensuring freedom of navigation in the Indian Ocean. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today the attention of the world is on the Korean Peninsula. As North Korea's recent missile provocations have sparked a sense of crisis on the peninsula, North Korea's missile and nuclear provocations are now the biggest security threat not only to the Northeast Asian region, but indeed to the international community as a whole. These provocations are outright violations of the rule-based international order, and the whole international community condemns them as demonstrated by the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. Resolving this issue is my government's utmost priority task, and in this regard, our government will utilize all available means, sanctions, as well as dialogues. As long as North Korea continues its provocations, the international community cannot but put more pressure for the strengthening sanctions and the restrictions. And my government cannot but take more countermeasures to defend itself against any contingencies. At the same time, my government will endeavor to build a lasting peace regime on the peninsula along with its efforts to denuclearize the North. We do not seek North Korea's collapse nor unification by absorption. We are calling for the resumption of inter-Korean dialogue and opening of channels for military talks to prevent any further escalation. I look forward to your support so that North Korea recognizes that when it holds provocations and makes the right choices, the international community will open a brighter future for it. I sincerely hope that the spirit of today's conference, peace, progress, prosperity, not only blossoms in the Indian Ocean region, but also in the Northeast Asia and on the Korean Peninsula. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chancellor Cho.